walls of Jericho, de Jericho around your life autour de ta vie, around your ministry autour de ta ministère, are falling now God wants to give you glory. Alors Dieu peut te donner la gloire. But the key to the glory, mais la clé à la gloire, is wisdom. Where we must get to. This morning, I want to talk about vision. But before I talk about vision, I must talk about something important that will help us. And I want to talk about the objectives of Christ's ministry. Objectives. Hallelujah. When we speak of objectives, we are referring to the objects, the purpose, the aim, okay, the reason behind something, your intentions. You must always live a life of objectivity. That means you must always know what you are doing, why you are doing it. Whenever you are to use your time, your resources, you must always be governed by this. And this time we're talking about the use of our life. So we are not talking about just using money. We're not talking about just using some other things. We are talking about our life and what our lives uh, will be spent doing. And you see, as I said, time is a perishable commodity. <clears throat> you must understand that what is also perishable is your life. Because as time is going, your life is going. Are you understanding me, somebody? It is not the day you are born that you start counting. You are one year. It is after you finish the one year that they say you are one year old. It's important that you understand that as you are living like this, and you think you have time, you simply wake up one morning and realize you do not have time for many things anymore. You simply realize that some things, I mean, except by mercy, they are gone. They are gone. You are not going back to it. Now, it's important for you to know that we must not waste our life. We must not waste our time. You cannot recall a day. You cannot recall, you know, a year, a month, an hour of your life. What has gone this morning has gone already. You cannot say, I'll be attending when I've missed today, I'll be attending. What you'll be attending is at another stage in life. Every day is a new stage in your life. Okay? So, Christ wants us to also understand that he does not waste his time. He does not waste his grace. He does not waste his resources. And whatever he's doing, he knows why he's doing it. Now, go with me to Psalm 63 and verse 8. It says, My soul falleth hard after thee. After thee. Thy right hand opposeth me. Amen. We are called to follow God. But we also understand that we are also called to follow man. We are called to follow those, follow them who through what? Faith and patience have obtained the promise. Hebrews 6.12 Christ says, follow me and I'll make you. In that process of following me, I have the opportunity of working upon your life. You know, there are many people who are out there in the world that are not made at all. They are going. They stand to face people. But they are not made. They have not been made. Christ was talking to people who are already created he said, I know you have been created. You are my creature. But I need to make you into something. So there are people who can be around us. They are our creatures. They can be in church. But they have not been made into what they are supposed to be. Now, so David has this attitude that my soul 
is following after you and I'm going after you in a certain way. Not just falling after you hard. That means I am not letting go of you. I am not losing sight of you. My eye must be fixed on you. Are you getting this? I must not lose sight of you. I'm falling hard after you. You cannot distract me. You cannot. No, 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 no. Like Elisha and Elijah. Elisha followed hard after Elijah. Amen. So, let's look at point number one. You are called to follow God. You are called to follow God. Go to Ephesians 5 verse 1. Ephesians 5 verse 1. Be therefore followers of God as their children. Amen. So, the proof of you being a child is that you must be a follower of God. Not just a child, but a precious child. You must be a follower of God. By the way, men of God, do not allow someone who does not follow hard after you to be precious to you. Us as their children. Don't allow someone who is casual, today is with you, tomorrow is over there, today is doing something, tomorrow is arguing with you on some point, tomorrow he sees something different, tomorrow he has a different opinion to call himself your dear child. They are not your dear child. Don't deceive yourself. Are you understand me something? I have had to tell some people in their face before, you are not my daughter. That says, followers of God as their children. You must follow who God has put over you. And those that you call children must be those that are committed to you and that follow hard after you. Or don't deceive yourself. Or one day they'll shock you and show you something. Now, let's look at the true nature of the Christian call. We, are, we want to talk about vision, but I cannot go to vision without talking about objectives of the Christian ministry. 2 Timothy 4, verse 7 to 8. Let's read. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth, there, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me that day, and not to me only, but unto all them that also love his appearing. The Bible says, I have fought a good fight. Someone say, fought a good fight. You must understand that the ministry, that the Christian life we are called to, and the ministry we are called to is a fight. Someone say, fight. Don't think you have come into somewhere where you have come to enjoy. From the one, you must understand that this is a fight. Tell somebody next to you, say, I am called to a fight. You, you must understand that you are called to a fight. When you understand what you are called to, it gives you the ability, hello, to adjust, to absorb, and to take it. There have been times I've sat down they give me this news from here. It's bad news. That pastor calls me. It is bad news. That one calls me. It is bad news. And you feel so down. now. But then I realize it is a fight. I am called to a fight. Therefore, I rise up. I am called to fight. I am Listen, if I have luxury or comfort, it is just something. The next thing he said, I finished my course. Someone say course. So it's a race. So we look at the nature of the call. It is a fight and there's a race. There is a route set for you to go through. And you must run your race on your course. You must stay. God expects you to finish some specific things. Amen. If they do a race, for example, they do a marathon race right now from Lomley. They will tell you where to pass, what routes to use. It might mean coming right from Lomley and they say you must go through Lomley Beach and then you come up Abadin Road and then you connect from Abadin Road and you go straight uh, down to where's the place called to Cotton Tree and you go Pademba Road and then you must now go uh, and what's the place called Uphill Cut Road eh? hello and you go through Hill Station and then you come down through Congo Course and then you go you, and they will give you this is your course if you now say ah I can do it faster you take from where's the place where they start from normally you go straight through Kissy Road and you come back straight you are disqualified that is not what was given to you to do. Look at me, somebody. You must know what was given to you to do. You must know the end mark. You are not the one who determines the end. It is the Lord that determines the end. And so long as you have breath, 
you must keep on serving. In the kingdom, we don't retire. Oh, I'm not hearing you, somebody. Don't plan for retirement. Go, if you apply for retirement, go work for United Nations. Go work for some, and then you can have your retirement plan. If you are serving God, you must not have a retirement plan. You must have a continuity plan. You must have a succession plan. Are you understanding me, somebody? You must plan to serve God. Let's start summer in his 80s. He said, I am not retiring. I am refiring. Tell someone, say, I will not retire. I will refire. Have this in mind. Have this in mind. Okay? Then the next thing says, I have kept the... Are you seeing it? So can I hear your voices? And can I see more energy? Some of you, you, you your faces don't look like you've got energy. You also look like, it's a good word. Your face must carry energy. Someone say, I've kept the faith. So you find out that it's a life of discipline and order. You don't come in and you do what you want to do along the line. You don't just come and then you twist and turn as it pleases you. You must stay with what you are called. So we are called to fight battles. We are called to a cause that must be lawfully completed. We are called to the faith of Lord Jesus Christ. We are looking at the nature of the Christian call. And whoever gets saved must understand these things. Unfortunately, a lot of Christians are not allowed to know today that you are called to a fight. So when a fight comes up, they run away. People say they are going to start a church. When some tough time comes, when something happens, a lot of missionaries died on the mission field for us to have the gospel. But today, Somebody has one calamity, has one other thing. They abandon ministry. They are put out of home. They are rejected. They have no house to sleep. They say, look at me. In my country, in my city, I have this. Am I the one coming to go through this? Let's go to 2 Timothy 2, verse 1 to 4. The nature of the call. Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And the things that thou hast heard of me, among, me. among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men. Who shall be able to teach others also. Verse 3. Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. So he told Timothy to be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. Verse 1. In verse 3 he says, endure hardness. Your being strong in the grace would not take away hardness from you. Rather, you must prepare yourself for hardness. Make up your mind that you are ready for hard and tough situations. The Bible says, as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. So you are called to be a soldier. You are a soldier. Listen, soldiers, eh? When there's war, they send them to go and fight human beings. When there's flood, they send them to go and fight nature. Are you understanding me, somebody? When there is a breakout of animals in the forest, they send soldiers to go there. Anything that, that requires a, an, you know, a superhuman something, they send soldiers. As if their life is not something. And the Bible says we are soldiers. You must understand that we are called to difficult situations. You are called to face hard times. You are called to face tough times. And you must arm your mind for that. Say, I'm a soldier. And I must endure hardness. Read verse 1 again. Give me verse 1. Thou therefore my son, be strong. Oh, oh, you're not reading. Let's see it together. Verse 1. Thou therefore my son, be strong in the grace. That is in Christ Jesus. From today, may you be strong in the grace of God. I say you cannot be weak in the grace of God. Be strong in the grace of God. Be determined about the grace of God. Let the grace of God equip you for tough times. Equip you for hard times. Equip you for difficulties. People don't understand the matter. But she's one of the first group of people. I think yourself and Pastor Charles. Pastor even Charles. We're in the group of people that I took to Jala. When the society people had prepared for me to capture me, I didn't tell them. But then they were in Bible school. I just said, let's go. 
had gone the first time and I had troubled the waters. And one morning, God told me, leave quickly. So I left quickly. And when I came to town, they went checking for me. And then they realized that I had gone. And they sent a message to me. Say, if you and a man come back, and I replied, I sent a message that said, I'm coming. If you're expecting somebody and it does not come, it's not nice. I sent back, I said, tell them that I'm coming. The second trip I took them with me. And we went. And after we went, we went with two cars. I sent off the one car. All of us would not fit into the one car. When the one car had gone, yes, and I told them now, I said, eh, they were looking for me in this city. Come see faces. Like the Bible says, the countenance of Cain was fallen. Come see faces. I said, hey. And didn't we enjoy it? We did. The first day I was preaching, I saw people standing under the trees. Pastor Charles, come, come to the front. Let's, let's see both of you. You are my last two survivors of that trip. Hello. They were under the trees around. And when I saw them, I knew what they were there for. And I preached a message, a nice message. Jesus loves you. He's such a loving Jesus. After the first night of I asked the pastor, I said, who were those people around? He said, sir, they were society people. I said, what, did, what were they doing? He said, they, wait, they were waiting for you to talk about their society so they can capture you. I said, yeah. I kept quiet. I didn't say anything. The second day, I preached a powerful message about the blood of Jesus Christ, and I said nothing, and I went to sit down, and an anointing came on me. They were there again, and I came up, and I took the microphone. I said, I heard that some people were looking for me, I am here. Try me. If you don't die, you don't die again. Yes, not there. Look, look at them. Some say hardness. Say be strong in the grace of God. I'm not hearing with somebody. We are talking about an apostolic generation that shall be strong. I told them. I told them. I said, my name is Tayo. So do not miss it. And I put on the mic and I went. And we walked through a pathway. We went to where we were staying. And that night, we prayed, we slept. I just had noise on my wall, on my, you know, the wall, the house, the room, boom, boom, boom. My wife was dying by me. And I went with my wife. If I so there, you train your children to fight. You train your family to fight. So, honey, you are married to me. She must understand who you are married to. So we are going to warfare together. So we went. Because I knew I needed to stand by my side in difficult times. Be careful who you are marrying. Oh, I'm not hearing somebody. Be careful who you are marrying. That they don't abandon you when the hardness of battle comes your way. We went there. And so when I had it, in those days it was shade lamp they were using. I said, who is that? And I had them answer, put off the light. Authority. I had no answer right then. So, I just, I didn't put off the light. Do you see my movement? So I just rolled down the bed, quiet. I didn't want to wake up my wife. I said, let me go and assess what is happening because I knew something was going on outside. So I went, you know, military. As I was going, I had another footsteps behind me. I said, okay, they have entered. And when I turned, ready for action, I saw my wife who was sleeping. She had woken up and she too was going behind me. Since I was training her, she was going with the training. Military? Let's go, military. So I said, ah, okay, let's go. Tactical approach. When I was looking through the rooms, because our room was last, and then you had this um, corridor before you go to the living room, I realized that all of them were awake. It's like, ah, the name is see us. They were awake and come see them all on the floor, military people. They never went to camp, but they, <laughs> they were down. When I opened the curtain, we were surrounded. The men were there like ants. And I now knew that if God does not defend us, we are finished. But all of a sudden, they gave a shout. Hey, hey, and they began to walk fast as though almost running. And walking. And they left. And it was strange. Because I knew they came for me. 
But it was not strange anyway, thank God. <laughs> so, because I knew that God would leave us. Did I pack to town? That was the second day. We continued till we finished. On the way coming, we were surrounded. I'll cut that one short. But what I'm saying to you, today, she can go into Guinea to prepare for this encounter in Guinea. We knew there was strike. But Samuel, two of us, you informed us. You kept us informed what was going on. People were being killed. She jumped into a vehicle and went in to go prepare. Because she has been trained in it. And at a young age of 62, still fighting battles for the Lord as a soldier. Went through a bad road at her age. Not with our own private vehicles, with public vehicles. Did what she could do. When was she was supposed to come, there was strike again. And they, they call their own manifestation. Like one of my pastors say, it is real manifestation. <laughs> he said. And people are killed. And we were there for how many days? You, they had to wait for extra. I had to wait for three more days, I think. Three, four. Okay. Before she could come back out. And when she came, guess what? She went ahead of me again. To the same place. Yeah. But besides the Jala thing, we have been warned before about Liberia. Council, Apostolic Conference in Liberia because of, as a council, what? So I don't cancel what God has told me to do. I am coming. And they were, they were afraid because I'd be at the rebel situation and they're like, they thought they were going to rise up. I said, no, I'm coming. Maybe that's why God sent them to go at the same dates when they planned this thing. Who are there? And they said, nobody must come out. I said, nobody what? I announced it the, day, the day before, the night before. I said, we are having conference in the morning and revival tomorrow night. In the morning, the street was clear like what? I was there. So let's go. And when I went, the people came. Had it. And Guinea, this is not the first time. My team has come out of me and they've landed into ambush. The Guinea has directed them where there was ambush. And the bus driver had to be smart and turn and escape. We did not return. We stayed and fought. Look at me. God has called you to fight. He has called you to hardness. Some say hardness. Yeah. Hardness. I'm about to talk about vision. But if you don't understand the objective of what you call to, of your calling, you don't understand why you are called. You don't understand the nature of your call. Let's forget about vision for God. Because the kind of vision that we need is for people who understand what I'm saying to you. And you're not suffering for man. I say you're not suffering for man. You are not suffering for me. I may be the one that God used to send you, but you are not suffering for me. You are suffering for God and for yourself. You must be happy. The disciples, they rejoice when they suffered for God. They were happy. I've never had testimony. And my mother slapped me today. My boss sacked me, hallelujah. Because I've never had it. Whenever anything happens, they call you personally. Daddy, then say another prayer just again. They don't give me notice. I've never had to give it as testimony. And in the way the apostles testified. When they were beaten for Christ. When they were stripped naked for Christ. Look at me, it's a testimony. You must rejoice. And both like Paul who says, I, you know, I carry the marks of, both of Christ on my body. Let's look at the next point. You are called to be friends of Jesus Christ. In the ministry, you are not called to be the friends of all kinds of people. You are called to be a friend of the Lord Jesus Christ. That is your calling. John 15 verse 14 and 16. We are finding all kinds of acquaintances. Your friends must be those who are friends of Jesus. You cannot have friends who don't have Jesus as their friend. You cannot have friends who don't have his work as a passion in their heart. You cannot be their friend. Let's read verse 14. If you are my friends if you do whatsoever I command you. You are my friends if you what? 
do whatsoever I command you. And the proof of our friendship with Jesus Christ, just like our proof, the proof of us being God's dear children, is that we follow him. The proof of our friendship with Jesus is that we do whatever he has commanded us. Someone say, do whatever. I'm not hearing you, somebody. The day he tells you to sell your shoe and use the money for gospel, sell your shoes and use it for gospel. Someone say, whatsoever. The day he says to you, leave from here. Look at me. God knows very well that our obedience to him will cost us. That's why he told us that this, he, he had not come to send peace. Huh? He's come to set family at variance, father against child, child against mother. By obeying God, people will turn against you. It's nothing you when your mother disowns you. At some point, my mother told me to my face that I am not her son. Simply for the gospel's sake. And mind you, I was her best son. Until my sisters were born. <laughs> but I was a pet son. Ah. And we, we went everywhere. We went to shopping. We went to this. We went to market. But the gospel brought a separation. When it meant that I must do what she wants. As against what God wants. That was the end of friendship. I suffered. I was beaten. I was put outside. I slept in the garage. I slept on the street. I slept in, in, on the steps. Just for the gospel's sake. I said, no problem. She put me out of her house. I said, no problem. No problem. For the gospel's sake. I left from the house my mother built to go sleep on the floor. The only thing I escaped with was my carpet. Small carpet. My room folded. They put me back and I escaped. With the carpet. And I went to my friend. And the carpet became our bed. You send me. A life that I did not grow up in. For the sake of the gospel. Went through it. But it's amazing. The house that she put me out of is the house that is left in my hands today. Because before she, of course, after a while she also became a fervent minister. And guess what? I became a favorite again in a certain way. She went out and said, my son has come. My, my, my son, the pastor, has come. One day I went to, in, to, in, I went to America and from America came to England. And she said, oh, my son has come from America. I said, mommy, mommy, I've not come from America. I've come from Sierra Leone. I passed to America. Are you understanding somebody? But I had to go through those things. Because as a friend of Jesus Christ, I have got to obey him. You say you're a friend of Jesus Christ. You cannot move from headquarter church to another place. One day, one pastor, I told him, I said, come go start a church in that country. He said to me, make another suffer for nothing. He had done many things and forgiven him. He had challenged me. He had done many things, you know, in those days. I had, ah, I cannot say he will change, he will change. I kept on making room for him. He's a young guy. I just liked him in the wrong way. You understand? Because you must know when to part company. But I said, no. You know, he will change. He's just... But the day he told me, he said, I am not going. Make and not go suffer for nothing. That was the end of it. I said, you call the gospel for nothing? You mean this gospel of our salvation? Christ purchased our salvation with his blood. And you say, if you have to suffer for him, you say that for nothing? I said, sorry. He begged all kinds of begging. People begged for me. I said, not anymore in this ministry. You are gone. You are gone. So in that sense, you, you are despising my suffering. That means you are making mockery of what I'm going through. Because if you call it for nothing, that means you are saying to me, what I'm going through, I'm wasting my time. That means that's the way I've been looking at me and the pain I've been going through for Christ. Then you are begging me to stay. You cannot stay here. Goodbye. Are you getting the point, somebody? Little bit and say, I'm a friend of God. And Christ says, if I friend, if I friend, you do whatsoever. He puts if someone say condition. Someone say conditionality. You cannot move from here to the provinces. You say you're a friend of God. There are people who are living from England to go start church in remote villages in other countries. 
You cannot move from the city to go to provinces. You cannot even go to your own hometown. The wisdom of God is a mystery. La sagesse de Dieu est the wisdom of God, la sagesse de Dieu, is not easily understandable. Il n'est pas facilement compris. It's not easily understood. It's not facilement compris. Yeah.